Gunter, who plays for Wales, his brother Mark is due to be married in Mexico on Thursday, which means he's now going to have to deliver his best man speech by Skype. And his parents had to make a decision about <laughs> which event they were going to go and watch. Oh, it's a silly hope they chose the football. You think mm. they have chosen the football? I thought you were going to say, I sincerely hope they've no, chosen like, to watch one of their sons get married like, uh, Chris... in the most significant event of his life. Oh, no, marriages are to a penny. You don't get to the semi final or final of a European Championship. Jam... It's the day of a lifetime and the parents aren't going to be there. One in three marriages ends in divorce. Well, this <laughs> moment for the Wales football team, this will never happen again. It's a one off. Your mate. Charlotte Jackson. Charlotte Jackson is married to Chris Coleman, the Wales manager. She's about to give birth. Obviously, they never assumed they'd be in this position. But if they get to the final, he can't be there. I know. Sorry. She said, that's fine. You stay there. Priorities. Don't come back for the birth. Absolutely right. This is the greatest moment in the history of Wales. <laughs> if he becomes president, would you continue to publicly support the ban yes no. on the President of the United States? Yes if, or no? If Donald Trump becomes President of the United States and seeks to enter the United Kingdom and doesn't withdraw his remarks about Muslims, mm. absolutely my representation to Theresa May will not change. You will, okay. you will support banning the President of the United States from Because he's made remarks okay. against Muslims that are inciting okay. hatred, violence. Absolutely. <laughs> She also went on to say, and again, it was a very good point, I think we need to empower women to not just be about dresses and beauty and selfies. We need to start having conversations and put our phones down and take social media breaks. Yeah, I mean, look, Piers? you know, it's a little, it's <laughs> yeah. a little bit... Piers? Well, I couldn't disagree more with them all. Uh, the thing about Jennifer Aniston is I, I really like her. Met her a couple of times, very, very nice. I'm sure you have too, Ross. But I don't know what's going on with her, because it's all very... It seems to me... A lot of self-wallowing going on here. Jennifer Anderson is a very privileged position, has a very privileged life, um, is one of the most photographed cover stars in magazine history, and now she's trying to kind of lecture everybody about don't objectify people for their bodies, don't body shame and so on. I, I just don't think you can okay. have it always. Shall I just put the other side? Sure. I think she is somebody who is sort of trapped by eternal judgment. She, I think she feels exhausted by the fact that she is held to a standard, you know, the way she looks and the way she acts and well, how don't she's do supposed... hundreds of covers, well, hang on, can then? I just carry well, on speaking? Got you have a choice, don't you? No one's forcing her to do naked magazine shoots, and yet she does them Absolutely all the time. Absolutely no one's forcing her to do it. If you put your body out there to do that, in my view, you're making your body a commodity and everyone can have a slice of the pie. Right? Say again, sorry? Your name isn't Noise, is it? So what no, it's just, a, it's just a, it's something that stuck with me from, from a child. So what, what so. is your name? It's, you have to go and Google it. Mason, it's not question time. It's just like, what's your name? <laughs> I can't do that, though. It's like asking Batman what his name is. My client it's is like, like asking Batman what his name is. You just is. don't do it. <laughs> to take the mask off. Is, Mason, is this the problem? Because I was watching you. I, I loved you sticking it to Simon Cowell, obviously. Yeah. But when you liken yourself to Batman, you know, a superhero you... saving the world. Do you think the ego's writing checks, the body maybe not quite able to cash? You tell me. This is this is well, your you job as well. On... I ask the questions. Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> client declines to comment. <laughs> I'm about to throw this real quick. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no, no, no. Mason, do you feel like there's a kindred spirit? In I just, the congratulations, because like this is your first day. Oh, thank you know, you've made it. I made it as well. We're here uh, together. Here's a word of advice to you, because I've judged talent shows, obviously. Do you think taking on the judges and being rude to them, um, being confrontational, did that help you in the long run? Um, you know, first of all, like, you say I was rude, but um, where was I rude in, that, in what, in what I did? But you did flip the bird at Cal, didn't you? Well, I asked him a question. I just, I just posted yeah, but a there question. Was a, but there was a bird flick, wasn't there? No. There wasn't? No. There was where? an allegation of a momentary movement of the No, thing. you can watch it. I, I, no? No, no, none of that at all. David Cameron. David Cameron gone off to Europe, got this fantastic deal, coming back, selling it, being outside number 10, and then we got all this blue on blue stuff, and the media were completely fascinated by that. And Labour in the meantime is going, hello, we've got something to say here. We and we've had got a different an message open, and ongoing got... bid for Jeremy Corbyn. We made six separate bids mm. uh, to his advisor. We made four more bids via his press office. We had one interview. Out of all of those bids, we had one interview with Jeremy Well, I Corbyn. know that he made... We I... consistently yeah. asked for him to be honest 
and open and, and the visible. Lead, the well, he wasn't. I mean, he wasn't sitting at home picking his teeth. He was, you know, he was up and down the country talking to people. And if the media don't cover what it is that he's doing when he's up and down the country, all right. So maybe he doesn't spend enough time sitting in your studio, Susanna. But he was talking to people up but and down on, the Emily, country. Emily, and Emily, and if the Emily, media don't want not, to cover it's not, it, it's not about being in our studio. Right. It's about talking to millions of people yeah, well, that's what he was who doing. are deciding whether or not to vote. He wasn't talking to millions. He was talking to a few hundred on his little walkabouts. We were offering him a platform to talk to millions, which he decided not to take. Well, uh, let me, let me ask you. No, 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 hang on. Let me just answer that, right? Yes. I went to Birmingham and we did, and, and Harriet Harman did a clip to the media, and we went off and we saw various people who were in this bus, and do you know what the media reported? The media, media reported a bit of film of all of these women, you know, Labour MPs, turning up in Birmingham, and the film said, nobody knows what Labour thinks about the referendum. We were there saying it. You'd had a clip. All you right. weren't Emily, using when it. Came on, when, he, when he did come on, I said to him, look, Jeremy, here's a, here's a problem that your own colleagues say about you, is that you don't exude enough passion. And when you have a very passionate debate like this and you're up against Boris Johnson, Nigel yeah, Farage yeah. and people like this, I said what they want to see from you is a bit, frankly, a bit of what you've been showing this morning, right. which is a bit of passion and real fire in the belly. Fifty million pounds a week we send to the EU, which we will no longer send to the EU. Can you guarantee that's going to go to the NHS? No, I can't, and I, and I would never have made that claim. Seventeen million people have voted for Leave. Yep. Based, I don't know how many people voted on the basis of that advert, but that was a huge part of the propaganda. You're now saying that's a mistake. We have a ten billion pound a year. A thirty-four million pound a day feather bed that is going to be free money that we can spend on the NHS, on schools, or whatever it is. But you're not guaranteeing that that money, as promised, will go well, to you the must NHS. You must understand. I was ostracised by the official Leave campaign and did my, and as I've always done, Other did my own thing. <laughs> I think you have to give children responsibility and I think we are creating a, a nation of children that are so fearful and anxious because we're putting adult fears into young minds and I truly believe when I left Zach at five and I could see him from the shop in my window, mm. he was absolutely fine. So were fine. the McCann's right to leave their children This alone? is a totally different it's issue. Not, it's, I, it's not, actually, totally, because it's they were totally having dinner years. at night and they could see the apartment mm. where they left them and their argument was exactly the same mm. and then to their utter horror, while they were having dinner, somebody came in, snatched their child and took her. Now, well, you're laughing. It's I not funny not, no, for them. No, it's not funny for them. I'm laughing that you're comparing something so extreme. Why wouldn't I? The ages because aren't that dissimilar. No, it, it, and your argument's the same, it, but you could no. see you could see roughly where he was. That's what they I, said. No, I could see him. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't out all night. I mm. popped over. If I was gone five minutes, that would have been too too much. It's a very, very different. What if the fire they weren't started, asleep in their what beds. What if the fire started in those minutes? What if he got up and went to grab a kettle that had boiling water in it and poured no. it on himself? How do you know what's happening to that child? Session, you, I think you're mm, in a well, position. Hang on, answer the question. Yeah, well, let me answer the question then, please, Piers. I think the fact is, is you, you, you know your child. From the moment Zach was born, you know, he, he's, he's a rule follower. He's a very cautious child. Mm. I wouldn't leave him in a room with, with lit candles. I wouldn't leave him in a room with a blazing fire in the hearth. You minimise risk. What risks. if your TV catches fire while he's sitting there? Do you know what? That could, that could happen if I was in the house. I could be in the bedroom and it could happen. Yeah, the but you're there, you, can, the you can immediately react. Trying to be down the shop. Well, I was going to say, was I, I think you're putting up an incredibly good defence of I something don't. which I think a lot of parents experience every mm -hmm. day, particularly when they're on their own mm -hmm. and there is nobody else who Absolutely. can look after the no child excuse. at that particular point. No excuse, point. sorry. And I it's think that practically would you do this? it is something that parents experience all the time. <laughs> happy you brought up your Kinder Egg uh, red herring because I did some checking after you brought it up the last time we talked about this and it turns out that choking on candy is one of the top five causes of childhood mortality in the United States according to the CDC. Firearms, accidental firearms deaths don't even rank in the top ten. Okay, Dan, you know, you're not... Sorry, you're, sorry, can sorry, I, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, I, I can't let this go. I'm sorry, Susanna. You're genuinely trying to tell us that in a country where 32,000 people a year are killed by guns, that eating candy is more dangerous. 
No, I'm telling you that you're bringing up the uh, red, the, the Kinder Egg is a complete red herring. I looked my prey in the eye, I shot it, I ate it, and I took a photograph. The photograph was a tiny part of me being on the ground, interacting mm. with animals. And the money that was paid by that paid for local jobs, it paid for the game scouts that accompany every hunt, which are looking to track down poachers, and this is what is active conservation okay. on the ground. Unfortunately, and animals in those areas are far more prolific yeah, than they are in non-hunting areas. Look, hunting is one thing, humane hunting and... and Taking down animals that are about to die, that's another thing. Okay. Posing for those kind of pictures Much and encouraging people to come over for big sums of money to go and put the heads on their office walls is So repellent. you don't mind hunting, you just don't like photography. Okay. I don't like photography or I the trophy. To, the trophy element of it is what repulses you people. You need to move away from the emotional argument. It is emotional. And, I, see, and I'm afraid I have that... to intervene because oh, wow. otherwise we're not going to get to Fine. the rest of the Fine. 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 stuff Fine. on the programme. Let me finish. When I see a severed head of a lion on an American dentist's wall, I get emotional about it. And the fact that you don't says more about you no, than it does about me. I, I get, people, hunters get very emotionally involved with their prey, far more emotionally involved than you get with the steak that you eat that you're quite happy for somebody okay. else to slaughter for you. Would you deport every Muslim currently living as a United States citizen, of which there are three to four million? Would you literally deport them? Um... You're hesitating? No, the point is... No, You're the reason I'm hesitating really? is... You, you actually are seriously <laughs> contemplating deporting three to four million No, I'm million not seriously Muslims? contemplating. We have a delay. I'm trying to decide which angle to take on this. Look, the point is, one of the mass shooters at San Bernard... Bernardino, um, just just last week, was technically a United States citizen. Now he flew and he went to y Yemen and found himself as fiance he was coming back with. There are laws that that could have prevented him from bringing that fiance back. There are laws that could have prevented you, um, not only Muslims but any U.S. citizens, including you do? the white Christians. Yeah, but let that answer, you're please about. answer this question because it's very worrying for any Muslim in America mm. who is a United States citizen when they hear of a guy who may be president, Donald Trump, say, I want to ban all Muslims, and he hasn't really clarified exactly what he means yet. You have. Yes, he you've has. said you said you want to stop all Muslims coming in. They look great, don't They're they? Great. They haven't changed the shot. Still very much on terra firma. The film is out on Thursday. Kings for Secret Service. <laughs> Let's hear it for the Spanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm desperate for money because the director wants bubble wrap. Oh, no.